Wait, it is Nuke. It is Cloud9 versus NRG. And Cloud9 will be starting on the T side, it would seem. Man like Mixwar heading on the outside and Tens going in the inside. I feel like over time he's just going to look more like Twist, or they look like each other a lot more. I don't know. Anyway, moving swiftly on. What do we have here? Sanislaw's got a uh, smoke and a diffuse kit, just like Daps used to when he was on the CT side for NRG. And there will be a lot of variants at the beginning, but it will quickly be closed out by Cloud9. Three players survive for them. Everybody takes some damage. So Daps is playing against his old team. I wonder if he'll recognize any straps or if it's just a, uh, a very different team now. Yeah, it's really hard to say. Again, we, we talked about this earlier, the fact that finding their identity, you know, we saw Daps sort of primary orping, it seemed like on Inferno, which was, you know, a bit odd to see, you know, you have Automatic in the team, Kusa in the team, Mixwell in the team, like three players that can all very, very, very well. But again, you know, there's so many different ways you can go with a team like this. It's just fascinating to see how they're going to be developing as we get to see the, the matches unfold. And you can see outside control is there for Cloud9. They've got tens there by himself. And the scouts will be rattled off by Cirque. The force by very scary on this map. Look at this, that smoke down in between Stan Tarek and Mixwell. And it looks like Cloud9 will lock that down. Cirque is there with the scout, but it doesn't seem like he can do too much from this position. Yeah, he went over extends. There's not much he can do, but he could reset the situation, move somewhere else, and maybe have a better opportunity to get a tag, a headshot, something. 13 HP. Not much to be had here for the, uh, the likes of Cirque. A tag, but a flying Mixwell gets another frag in the bag. And that's not a shabby, too shabby a start for him. So, 2-0 in favor of Cloud9. The money sucks for an RG. They don't take anything from the last round into this one. So, I don't expect there will be much to be offered. They can't really afford to buy too much. So, this should be a formality round for the likes of Cloud9. And indeed, two HEs. And that is about it for NRG. Perhaps they'll go outside. Ooh. Lining up for a play towards events, perhaps. That one will be missed, but no one's going to make their way through. They'll open a door of opportunity, but uh, again, they want to avoid any early shenanigans. And Mixwell's making a lot of money with his Mac 10, it must be said. And at this point, they know where everyone for NRG is. So, pretty easy cleanup for tense and automatic. And that's what we like to see. Really just get those three rounds out of the way with, and now we're into the full buy. NRG, they're going to have the all pick up on Cirque pretty much straight away, and a decent amount of utility to work with as well. And it's actually quite interesting. Obviously, the Org is a little bit more expensive than the M4, but obviously, since the changes, we are seeing just, we're barely seeing any Orgs at all, actually. Even when CT sites do have money, it's, it seems like we're not seeing it too, too much. So, really fallen out of favor since some of the changes recently. And on a map like this, the Org actually is, is so phenomenal just because of the scope, the distances that you're operating with. It allows you to do some stuff you just can't really do very well, effectively, I should say, with the M4. And this could be a very cheeky shot. Oh, I thought that I'd actually that did land on Dacusta. He's lucky to be alive. He is. Hopefully, he'll make the best use of it in this round. And let's see what Cloud9 have to offer. Dap still rolling with the Mac 10. We've only got two helmets on the five players for NRG, so maybe there is something to be done, but he may just be cannon for it. He may, his job may be to take a bullet again. Uh, he was doing that often on NRG, but he's done that and more in the game so far we've seen today for Cloud9. Now they look to kill the first spy as they execute into the A bomb site. Molotov's everywhere, Daps gets taken out. There's no answer from the likes of Cloud9, and Ethan will take automatic out as well. Koos is in the red, so this is rough. There's no real progress here for Cloud9. They're starting to make inroads, but they're losing players. It's two versus four now as Ethan finally gets taken out. Done a great job this round so far, and his teammates will finish off the job. It'll be four players surviving for NRG. That's really nice stuff from them. Absolutely, that's, that's really how you want to start things off on the CT side. Take that momentum back, economically and otherwise. And Cloudline, how much do they have to work with here? They're going to have a full buy. You've got loads of cash in the bank uh, from those really clean first three rounds that they had. And Orbit onto Mixwell. That's what you wanted to see, James, on the T side of Nuke. This will be interesting to see exactly what kind of plays he's going to be making in this. Uh, I don't think we can even really call it a system just yet for Cloud9. It's, it's, early, it's uh, too early. But he will be taking it towards the outside, and that's where Cirque is as well. So we might have a meeting of the minds between the two AWPs. 
Stabs did such a good job of enabling Circ on the NRG squad. I wonder if Circ will type sorry in chat every time he frags Stabs. <laughs> Two round lead now. Cloud9 needs to turn this round early and get momentum back in their favor before NRG start to grow strong, start to build money, start to have momentum. Daps is carrying the bomb. Currently in T spawn to set up some grenades for outside, one would presume, or maybe inside. See where this one goes. Ethan waiting, looking down will help him avoid flashbangs, but of course his target may come from below as well. One minute on the clock, we've got some presence towards the ramp position. Tarek, they're lining up for him, but he can't quite do anything. He's got the bait there, though, but can he pick the timing to peek together? Maybe it's not needed. Breeze with a 2k, and it's a man advantage for NRG. Next well, opening the door with the AWP in hand as they look to go towards the upper bomb site. Tense drops in to coordinate. Breeze there at the back of the bomb site. Ethan on top of the hug. Can he find something? Yes, he can. Mixwell will go down. Great crouch peeking there from Ethan. And that'll be a wrap on this round. And you know what, James? I just realized something. So obviously, you know, back in, in I guess, maybe the greatest success that Mixwell really achieved was on that optic lineup led by Stanislaw. And then Stanislaw left, um, somewhat surprisingly, and suddenly, and Mixwell was quite vocal about that. So he gets the frag. He gets the frag Stanislaw now. That's yeah, nice. That must yeah. be nice. And also, this uh, this team could really it's such an exciting project. I feel like I feel like both these brands could really be revitalized, and that would be incredible for North American Counter Strike. By the way, the winner of this match goes to the semi-finals. So this is a very very important game of nuke for both of these teams. All the matches matter. The final matches today. Turk looking for something. And there are a great many targets outside, but he may need help to try and hold position. Tanislaw having a little look, some burst fire, but again, he's got to be careful. Won't outstay his welcome, starting to fall back a little. It is a shooting gallery for NRG outside. They are far better equipped, although these eagles do have range. But no kills just yet. Oh, Sirk. Making that AWP work. And uh, it's been a long day of Counter-Strike here, which is actually pretty good, I think, for a lot of the players. Really warm and used to the setup. You know, we saw Cirque on some of the opening matches of today. Not quite feeling some of his flick shots. And you know, now it's certainly going to be the case that he's going to be nice and warm, or at least one should hope. And either way, it's a good start for him. And Cloud9 opting to go for a full buy here. They have the Krieg on Takusa, no AWP in sight. So we'll blow open the squeaky door. That's a really good move to apply some pressure. You can get the smoke, the forward smoke there. And we've got to hold that four here because we have an aggressive setup outside here for NRG. And Stan's going to be the one to take the first frag. Tens with a beautiful response. It felt like he was completely distracted, but still manages to somehow kill Tarek first. And if they're paying attention exactly, they know that uh, Stanislaw is still outside. So that is some information. Tens has dropped off the top and he's starting to go towards T-Red, as you can see on the mini-map. Cloud9 have a player in the lower area as well. Kuster is creeping around, maybe looking for a CT, trying to defend that B position. But are the CTs even aware? It's a question mark as far as I'm concerned. Now, there are some ways to try and sneakily open a door in the B bomb site. Players up uh, spraying Squeaky, for example, if it's still there, maybe got blown off or doing something along the lines of that, trying to cover the game sound by spraying their weapons. But it seems Kuster will make his way towards the secret area. Having a look, maybe trying to catch somebody off guard. But you can only do this for so long because the clock is with NRG as it starts to count down. Four versus four, and the at least the A-bomb site is still in control of NRG. They may assume that they don't have any power towards B, NRG. As still, there's only T's downstairs. 30 seconds remain now, and it looks like a B-bomb plant's likely. You've already got a Cloud9 player in Squeaky. You could just hold that position to stop a rotation from that position. If they clear the vents, then they know that they've got a really good cover post-plant. 20 seconds to go. Yeah, this is looking a little bit sketchy at this point for Cloud9, trying to make their way forwards. But they're not the best choke points to work from for NRG as well. But Ethan will pick off 10s nonetheless. As Stan looks to try to drop down, but he gets outlurked by Automatic. 
knows his tendencies all too well, it seems, as Anil G is trying to work from that wrap position, but it's going to be Breeze who opens things up on the flank, and that is key, because now those choke points might be a little bit easier to get through, because there's only one player that's focused on that, because someone has to look out for Breeze as he comes in through the flank. He'll be closing things down, but the time is of the essence as the bomb ticks further and further. Kusa alone tries to go for the pre-fire there, but it will not work out for Cloud9. It's a great effort, but NRG will eventually make that retake a success. I, is that four rounds in a row for NRG? I believe... I forgot where Cloud9... Yeah. yeah, it is four rounds in a row. Thank you, observation people. Four rounds in a row for NRG. So that's a good indicator from the first buy round onwards. They've won every round. That's a great way to start your CT side on Nuke. Again, winner of this match goes to the semi-finals tomorrow. So it is a very important game of CS being played here. NRG now in the lead, and Cloud9 are on the pistols. It's their turn to suffer the shortcomings of a bad economy. Tarek is in. Well, done some damage anyway. Thought he was in for a few kills there with a nice spray. In older versions of CS, people would have sprayed through the bottom corner of that box, but uh, you don't really see that in CSGO. Breeze falling back, but he's got his teammates in case somebody tries to punish a reload. Could have been a nice bait there, but Cloud9 will still have three players alive. Just about. Daps on one HP. For a second there, it looked like all three players wanted to peek together, almost blocking each other. That could have been a disaster, but Cloud9 will slow things down after they get the three versus four. And now questions are on the map because there's been enough time that they could, they could have rotated all the way to the outside. So you can see some attention has been brought onto that. And that's a, we get a really cool position there from Breeze. That, that covers a lot of, a lot of uh, eventualities. If they go through the door, he's able to peek out and play off of a teammate. They come out of the hut. He's got a really good off angle because when they come out of the hut and he, they're visible to him, he, they're going to be looking to different positions. And time is ticking now. We've got 45 seconds left in this round. And that means that Cloud9 have to start to get more map control here, gain some more ground towards the bomb plant. And actually, you don't have to do too, too much. They've really covered all their bases. And Tens will break the glass. And that will serve as a distraction. Heading towards the 25 second mark. All the CTs have a kit, but they may not need them because the bomb is on the floor and it's not planted. Tens alone now with the Desert Eagle, and he needs to die before this time runs out. Otherwise, he is not going to get his loss bonus, and he needs that to buy, and he will get it. NRG now, five rounds in a row. As you can see, their logo is on fire because they're having that much success. Can Cloud9 stop them or even slow them down? Plenty of money for the T side in this round. They've taken a tactical timeout to figure out how to get back to winning ways. Indeed, it's... Uh, it's it's difficult sometimes when you lose a lot of momentum. It doesn't feel like you can get that, that consistent start. I mean, that's why teams run defaults. In a, I mean, in this case, you know, typically you get the smokes outside. And what that does is it forces some rotation, which creates more openings on the map, which allows you to then gain even more ground or, or maybe get a pick or, or create a setup that can try to, try to bait out one of those kills that you need or, or something like, you know, along those lines. You can use it to fake with. There's all sorts of options that you can start to build on that. And that's why for the longest time, the, the smoke walls, the wall of smoke outside has been a critical part of a lot of T rounds. And also the same can be said for blowing open the squeaky door, getting the smoke down, threatening a drop down to the vents. You can lurk from that smoke. There's all sorts. But here we can see a fast movement outside. There's no smokes at all here. This is pretty brave, I've got to say, just running out in the open, James. Yeah, they've made a lot of ground very quickly. Ooh. That is absolutely disgusting with the Krieg. Oh, that's nasty. And that is a very nice early frag. Now, how do NRG deal with this? They've put two players towards the B-bomb site. They're expectant of a play towards Secret, and Mixwell's just waiting, it seems. He's just waiting for them. He knows that they're hungry for information. Tarek just checking in case anybody's made their way to decontamination already. Now, how far will he go once he realizes that this is clear? Does he go towards secret? Does he try to make a play? Catch a player off guard. Four versus four as Breeze finds himself on the roof. That's a very brazen play from him. And uh, the bomb has been left back. So Cloud9 will slowly have to carefully collect that. Now, when your lobby has been compromised, what is your next play as a T side? Where do you think it's safe to go if somebody's right behind you, potentially? 
Yeah, it's definitely a difficult spot to be in, Ethan. Ooh, that flash. That can be tricky sometimes. You don't know when it's going to go off those really long ones, but Ethan times it perfectly. He's got the bomb in his feet as well. Couldn't really have gone better. Oh, man, his crosshair placement is so, so good. He will finally die to Kusta, but surely too much damage has been done. They know exactly where the bomb is. They know exactly where Kusta is. There's no element of surprise here. What does he really have to work with? The time's against him as well. Getting some kills would be nice, and that's perhaps the best he could have asked for. But it will be 6-3 to three NRG. They continue to win rounds. It was such a good start for Cloud9. However, what is, what is the right play when the CTs take lobby away from you? Like, what is, how do you answer that? How do you, how do you make a play into a bomb site? How do you know that's just so much information? It's so much real estate for them, and uh, it just collapsed after that. So, six rounds in a row now for NRG. There's been no answer from the first buy round onwards as far as Cloud9 are concerned. T-side looking difficult. Mixwell finds himself now with a CZ-75 rifles for the remainder. And there may be variants around this smoke. Stanislaw's in a forward position, not going to rest on these consecutive rounds, but hungry for more. Taking the game away from your opponent is a really strong thing to do if you can do it well on the CT side, and he looks to do that. Cloud9 looking for info. Automatic's aware of things that could be possible, especially with that smoke down. So he will check the position just about. Almost didn't check it properly, but he was ready for it. Turk doesn't have to flick. He did fire the shot. He's missed a lot of flicks today. Very unlike him, and that might be very costly for NRG. And there's some information just seeing NRG just running, or rather Cloud9 running down towards Seeker. And you can see Tarek tries to reposition, but actually the entire team didn't go down just yet. They, they kind of made a staggered effort towards the secret position, which really did catch out Tarek. And you can see Ethan's been fed into them now as well. And I think that's in part because Ooh, when Tarek... That's... Where are you getting this from? It's... I don't know, man. He's, he's rejuvenated. He's angry. He's got a lot to prove, man. He got, he got cut from the from NRG. Now he's he's up against them. There's a lot on the line, James. Where's he getting these pride nasty shots from? Some, some EXP that we're just not aware of. That's disgusting. I haven't seen him fire shots like that in a long time. It's great to see. It, Rejuvenated yeah. on Cloud9. And especially important against the team that cut you as well as in the fact that like you only you, you haven't been winning gun rounds, you just won the first three rounds. That was an Ethan level peak. That's the kind of thing you expect to see from Ethan. But anyway, two rounds between the two sides. Finally, Cloud9 have won a very important round. But they need to get this one as well. This would be very costly for NRG, although there is money on the, in the hole for the likes of Tarek and Cirque. But Cloud9 very much need a consecutive round here. Molotov will try to force Cirque from his position. You can see he was he was wanting to go and have a peek, and maybe if he was landing all these flicks, he would have gone for that. But I do wonder if that's shaken his, his confidence that he's missed so many flicks today. Tens has been taken out, as has Stanislaw. Four versus four, plenty of time for Cloud9. Automatic's in a strong position as well. Will Tag be ready for this, though? He won't be. He takes one straight in the face. Yeah, he had absolutely no idea that a player was already deep into that position, into towards ramp. And that was his downfall. He's well looking for some value, and he overpeaking from the CTs outside, but he won't see any of that. As things slow down. Daps is the one to find the kill on to Breeze. As Ethan takes some map control, and you've got to take something back at this position. That's what Ethan's doing. He's going aggressive because NR ne NRG needs something right now, and he's able to deliver a kill and get some more information as to what's going on. Cirque with his back against Squeaky. I believe there is someone there. In fact, Kusa's creeping up behind him. Can he be safe from this angle? This is very scary right now. It's like he's got no idea. Oh my god. If he was slightly further back, I'm sure Kusa would see his backpack or something. Oh my god. Time is, is now a huge pressure as well for Cloud9 to get that bomb planted. NRG don't have to move a muscle, but they'll go upper, and there it is. It all collapses. The trades are good, and Cloud9 pick up another round. This is not looking... It's 5-6. This is looking like a good half already. Yeah, that, that was a really important round for Cloud9 because they did clear out all the money. Again, there's, there was more cash on some players, so Tarek and Circuit are going to go double ops. They're all in on this round, but we start to see the potential for Cloud9. We've got the Max 7 for Ethan. We've got a 5-7 for Stanislaw. So there's plenty of shortcomings to, for Cloud9 to exploit, but they can't have a good start and a horrible finish to this particular round. They've got to win it with confidence, and, uh, well, they've got to win it full stop. So let's see if they're able to do that. Four players going outside for Cloud9. Could it be a quick one towards the B-bomb side, it seems. Oh, the pace. The flashbangs are absolutely on point. Circle's completely blind. Oh, oh my god! Ooh. That Krieg! You thought Circle's going to nail somebody there, but did not work out. 
at all, and that is a huge problem. The AWP will be collected by Stan, but Cloud9 gained so much ground so quickly there, that change of pace is worked out, and Dabs is going to deliver another one. Tens must have heard the scope when Stanislaw first scoped in. That shot on Mixwell was absolutely nasty. They had to expect something from Stanislaw, but he just made it look casual the way he landed that shot. Tens looking on a low ground now. Automatic on the high, but he's not around the corner. He hasn't seen Stanislaw just yet, who is waiting for something else. Seems that Cloud9 are transfixed on this hell position, but they have made it a little easier. The shadow spotted by Stanislaw, he had a better angle. And there's another frag with the AWP. Tens has to deliver from Tarek, but Stanislaw could get it from above. He's taken out stereo frags for Cloud9, and the score is 6-6. Six to six. All right, okay, so it's, I don't know what, but something happened in Cloud9. It, it's, they, are, they seem so rejuvenated here. The energy they're bringing to the rounds is awesome to watch. They've got this really strong pace going into some of these outside takes where they aren't waiting for those, those smokes to bloom. It, and it takes a while for those smokes to pop. Instead, they're just going fast. They've got deep flashbangs, which covers them for the time that they need to cross those positions quickly. I love that style of, of attack on the outside position. You don't see it too commonly. Speaking of attack on the outside, we've got five HEs flying through, and they will do practically well, they'll do two points of damage, Dan. About as disappointing as, as normal, then. That, that is, uh, yeah, I mean, I was expecting more than two damage from five grenades, but uh, I, such I, is life. I've got to say, it, it does make it so that when it does happen, it's super sick. But it doesn't happen, so, that's the problem. And, it never and, happens. And that's the thing, like, it's such a hard thing to balance, too, because if you make the HEs better, then they, they can definitely become overpowered, <laughs> yeah. extreme, extremely yeah, yeah, yeah. overpowered. So you get such a hard line to walk. Yeah, pinpoint accuracy they need to be. And, and I'm okay with it. That wasn't for a long time. It's not quite the, the HEs from 1.6, which actually like, has splash damage that goes through, clips through walls. So that's Let's that, bring that those was back. a thing. That, I mean, that was, that was a hell of a thing. Without updated animations as well. <laughs> yeah. That was like the most potato animation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, it's like throwing these cubes at people. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's like a two-dimensional, it's like a, what was that? Like Parappa the Rapper or something, or that Zelda game, like cell shaded thing flying through sideways. Anyway, maybe there is a weapon to collect for Stanislaw. Indeed, there seems to be. AK-47 for him and for Breeze. So there's some nice bounty to be had in this round from NRG. Moving into the dying rounds of the first half and the struggles could end here for NRG if they are successful. They've got about 5,500 per person average, 5,000 to 5,500. Now, can Cloud9 continue the, their momentum? We see a tactical timeout from the likes of NRG. But indeed, the game has really turned around. And I do hope Mixwell remembers to buy some Kevlar, because right now he's naked and he's got 8650 in the bank. Yeah, interesting times. I'm just, I, again, like I'm loving this pacing from Cloud9. I want to see more of it. And it seems to be something that the NRG are not there we go. Dealing with incredibly well so far. I mean, Cirque is unable to get into like into a position where he's able to defend because Cloud9 have such a fast timing because they're not waiting for the smokes to pop and they're using flashbangs instead that he's having to deal with angles and, and timings that aren't as as uh, common, I should say. But at the same time, you know, switching up the pace is pretty impactful because they may have energy a little bit scared outside or maybe energy will overcompensate and play a couple of players deeper. Have to see, it's going to be Mixwell to answer first through the door, the AWP, where's it going to be? You just don't know, and that's the strength of it. Good thing he bought that Kevlar and the helmet. He got, <laughs> yeah. one to the, he got one to the bell and he's got three HP. Cirque, on the other hand, had no money for any uh, armor, but uh, he has the luxury of the CT position, so... Less vulnerable to grenades and the like. Breeze up in the heaven position. Now let's see if Cloud9 can capitalize on that man advantage. Not always the case in this half. They'll slow things down in case of a push from aggression or just to wait out the grenade usage of NRG. One minute on the clock. Can you see they're poking and prodding in different places? We've got that's going downstairs a secret. We've got Kusa in the lobby looking into the A bomb site and the hut even and uh, here we go it's Breeze again he continues to be a problem traded by that 3 HP mix well very expensive 3 HP there very very useful indeed 45 seconds remain so still a good portion of time to use but it's 
Oh my god, oh no, oh no, poor Sir, he had no idea. Daps, seeing the barrel on the side of the crate, gave everything away, and that allows him to flank Heaven, which is in, like, such a big deal in this position. He's creating so much pressure here. That said, Tarek deals with it really well, but then the trade comes in from Kusta. Things getting worse now. Ethan in the one versus two. The bomb's gonna go down lower. He's gonna have absolutely no idea where these players are. He knows it's been planted down lower, but that's it. Mixwell has himself a nice angle. Uh, it could be a double pick, actually. You can use Mixwell as bait booster and pick out afterwards. He's only got three HP, but now they have not all the information because he can go to control, but the glass is not a smash. He's got to smash it. More clues. Oh, perfect timing from Kusta, but Ethan still lives. Where is the trade tracker? That's what Ethan needs to find out. Kusta running forward. He gives him the one versus one. Mixwell, three HP, he's got a pistol, and that will be enough. That could have been disastrous, but it wasn't. And now it's five rounds in a row for Cloud9. Oh man, there's absolutely a world where he looks below him and gets that kill. That's insane. That was so close. Cloud9 though, their T side's been so good. Been really enjoying seeing them work the basics really well. And they look pretty confident. Tens has been performing overall so far today uh, in a, an impressive manner, I have to say. I've been enjoying how strong he is as an individual. And we've got a faster approach here. Daps charging past the smoke on ramp. And he knocks, but nobody's home, at least not in the ramp position. He's not, oh, do they have no idea about this? They have this is, absolutely no idea. This is huge. They do, they being NRG, they do have a man advantage for the time being, but there's a very strong opportunity for Daps not to get one, but to get two kills. Takes Sanislaw out, and do they even realize that he's in the hell position? It's not necessarily a guarantee. Oh dear, all this position. This is a crazy last round of the first half. Four versus three in favor of Cloud9, and uh, NRG practically have no position, and it goes from bad to worse. Tarek on a Mac 7, Ethan on the M4A4. They've got a lot to do here. And that, what an amazing gamble for Cloud9 to try to exploit an early, really fast early timing towards the round position, finding that there's actually nobody there. NRG taking a risk themselves with their setup. It's, it's hard to, you can never ask for it to be that ideal for Cloud9, but in this case it was. And we're left with a lowly Mag 7, and his position's been given away as well as he comes up the ladder by the smoke colliding with him, and that's a 9 6 half. What a, that's a great T side from Cloud9, all things considered. Yeah, considering it was looking worrisome because we saw a, a number of rounds from NRG at the beginning, and Cloud9 hadn't won a single buy round basically, so we were starting to wonder is this going to be another 3 12 half like we saw earlier on Inferno? But no, they turn things around, get some consecutive rounds themselves, and then here we are in a, in a very strong position. So, Cloud9, I would say overall, despite some issues. On, on Inferno. I think they've been impressive so far. Considering how little time they've had together, um, I think it's impressive what they've been able to do here so far. Yeah, they've been able to work their strengths pretty well. They kind of stick to what, what they know will work, and they're keeping things relatively simple. And, and I mean, in Counter-Strike, sometimes the basics are enough, uh, especially when you have individuals that are, are as good as, as the, individuals that, the individuals that they have. Yep. And it has been so interesting to watch, for example, Daps is picking up the AWP a lot. That's, I never would have expected that with this team, because there's so many other ways you can go with an AWP, yeah. uh, considering they have three like top-tier AWPers. So that in of itself is interesting. Also seeing Tents, okay, what is he capable of? We know that he's ridiculous online, but that rarely translates on a first event to land. But, to, but he's been playing pretty well yeah. overall. Yeah. Mixwell, obviously, is, he's, he kind of always plays well, I think. When it comes to like top of mid on Inferno, there there are things they need to study and kind of fix like off the server. But uh, individually, we've seen some some really cool stuff. I think I think Daps especially though has been a lot more clutch than he was on on NRG. I think yeah, he had yeah, a very yeah. very much like a backseat to enable the other players. But but we've seen him do some really nice stuff in a number of different games here. So it's a very promising sign from him, kind of leading by example in that respect. But going over um, to to NRG. I think it's pretty cool the extra factor that Stanislaw brings to that team and the kind of proactive plays, the aggressive plays, the, the plays to take the game away that Stanislaw will do himself that uh, you wouldn't necess necessarily see from Daps in that position on NRG. So I really do think that it's, it's mutually beneficial yeah, the yeah, change yeah. for both teams in that respect. And uh, that's pretty, pretty awesome to see, it really is. Yeah, it's, it, the other thing that's interesting too about talking about individual performances, a lot of individual performances can 
be the fact that you know you have a system, you set your players up. You know, Dabs obviously initially was quite he was quite so prolific in that way when we first saw NLG breaking out in the way that he was using Circ and setting Circ up and how he had the rifle support around him to really allow him to reach his star potential. Again, you know, we, they're performing pretty well and they haven't had the time to have this this system where they understand in on pretty much every map and all the roles that they're like all the roles they're playing and yeah. how they how they work together to set each other up. They're they're playing you know more like more loose in that sense. So it's, uh, it's good, it's encouraging to see that they're able to make that work. It's very encouraging. Do you favor a team in the second half? Uh, I think I actually favor Cloud9 because I think going onto the CT side, I think it's generally a bit easier. Um, you know, you don't have to do as much work. You just have to know some basic rotations. The, commun the communication is really the biggest thing. And because I think most people know kind of the drill when it comes to how you play that. And I think what it really comes down to is how like, are we going to see cookie cutter defaults from Stanislaw's NRG? Because I think if we do, I think that's going to be easy for Cloud9 to deal with. If we see more explosive play, kind of, in, you know, let's say like um, Furia do, where they they kind of very like like they'll go 100 percent and just stop, and then they 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 really shift the pace a lot, very explosive. I think that'd be much harder to deal with for Cloud9. So that's what I'd like to see out of NRG because it's just it's just more chaotic, more chaotic to deal with. Yeah. If Cloud9 were to be able to make it to um, to the semifinals tomorrow, I think that would be fantastic from an organization oh, point of view. Yeah. Because again, you can't have too much expectation on day one of a new team of four new players in where every player is in a different role, including Automatic, because he's not orping anymore. So yeah, um, yeah. I think that a semifinal spot would be fantastic for the squad. And it looks like we're probably going to get a restart to this game, uh, as most people are standing around in spawn or spawn, depending on where you're from in Europe. Yeah, I wonder how Automatic feels on this team, because it, it, it seems to be the case that, you know, he, obviously we, we, we know that he was able to grow into a really, really good AWPer, but it was out of necessity because he had to replace Skadoodle. He was the only man really for the job, and he did the job well. And now he's an opportunity to kind of reinvent himself again if he wants to. You can, like, every single player on this lineup can reinvent themselves and their identity in the game completely because it's a completely new unit. So you can just start from scratch in that way. And that's actually very liberating. And I think that's something that we don't look at sometimes, like a study of where someone was a few years ago, the different teams and roles they were in and how they grew as players. And, and, how, and some people are very good at, at, at uh, adapting over time, and some people are not quite as good, and they, they, they suffer for it. I think Stewie is a good example of someone who, who managed to be put in a lot of different positions and find success in all those different positions, still maintaining his identity, but working through different units and learning things as he went. Um, Clear example, just because of the success of Team Liquid and him and himself as an individual. Okay, so the round has been restarted, and it will soon be on pause, and we'll get into this. So again, nine rounds to Cloud9 to the six of NRG, and Cloud9 move over to the CT side. But what will it look like? That is the question. They uh, they haven't been. Again, it's been rough on some maps and, and not on others, so we don't know what to expect too much. But we'll soon find out. We won't have long to wait. Not too long. Cloud9 still on fire. They've got those consecutive rounds. So again, it was a, a late resurgence from Cloud9 after winning the pistol, then capitulating on the first flurry of buy rounds. It, was a, it looked like it was going to be a strong half for NRG, but here we are, six of nine rounds for NRG as they move into the pistol. And what we're we looking at in terms of Granates, we're going to have Tarek. He's going to be the grenade man, it seems. I don't see a weapon, though. I do wonder if we'll see a P250. I think there's enough range, uh, depending on where you're going, on nuke, like outside, obviously, to pick up a P250. I'm a big fan of a P250 for the T side on the pistol round. One, two is uh, very exciting times. And Daps will have his smoke and diffuse kit, as per usual, on the CT side. James, I just had a, a quick thought. It's a oh slight, slight digression. All right. This is the first time I think we've ever casted outside. In our long careers outside. as commentators, we've casted in lockers and bathrooms and basements and all sorts of places, but never outside. You might be right, actually. Yeah. This might be the first time we've casted outside, or yeah. second time. First day. All right. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just so dialed into getting this second half kicked off because I really, really desperately want to see which NRG we're going to see on these T sides. So interestingly, okay, one of the previous issues that NRG had, and and it's very, it's very difficult to understand where it can come from. But they had a communication problem. That was, that seemed to be something I was hearing. Uh, 
repeatedly. I talked to Dafs on my podcast a, a long time ago about it, and uh, you know, he acknowledged that, that was like one of the biggest problems, and, and that it can be a team that has a lot of quiet people that can get quiet. And I know Sir, like, you know, he's, he's a bit of a hype beast himself. Like he can get get loud, and he can be the joker of the team. And, and you know, Tarek has since come into the team as well. But is that still an issue for them? Because I feel like. I don't know what kind of personality Cloud9 is going to have, but I'm going to have to stop that that fall right now. We have the pistol kicking off here and a quick ramp take coming in from NRG that's working out quite well. Cloud9 give up position. And someone's about to be exploited, and I think that somebody is that's not quite hitting the mark, running out of bullets, and down he goes. NRG all over the B bomb site. They're going to have so much position, and they're not done with it just yet. Charging, trying to abuse the numbers in every position, and that's quite smart because wherever they choose to go, they're probably going to have more numbers, at least in those short few seconds. Still with, a, with an advantage, and now it's just automatic alone. He's delivering one headshot, but too many men on the B bomb site. NRG take the pistol. Right, and with that, we have a game on our hands. But as we said before, Nuke, pretty good map for the Force by on the CT side. Will Cloud9 opt for that? It looks like at least Daps and Ten so far have. They've spent everything. Automatic is left. Okay, Automatic is going all in as well. Will we have anybody saving any money? Okay, Kusta will stay just. Okay, no, everyone's going all in. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Everyone's on the same page. And we've got an MP9, a 5.7, a Deagle, a Max 7, and a UMP. It's a variety show, and it looks, honestly, on a map like this, it can be very dangerous. This is really going to test NRG and how well versed they are in their anti force by protocols. NRG starting slow. They have the time to try and use to avoid any early surprises, any nasty surprises from the likes of Cloud9. But their nasty surprises come in the way of weaponry and position. So we see Tens boosted onto the high ground on A, and Daps tries to pop off the boxes without giving his position away. No sound cues, no unnecessary clues for the likes of NRG. Now, there are no smokes here for Cloud9, just a flashbang on Mixwell, which he will try to put to good, to, to good use. Sneaky positions, NRG creeping, but they'll have to make their way quickly towards the B-bomb site if there is any, their intention, because they've left 45 seconds, two quick headshots for Cloud9, and I smell disaster, Ooh. and it smells pretty damn good if you're Cloud9. That did not go very far at all, did it? Oh my god, look at Tens, man. He is absolutely hype off that one. That was pretty incredible. His deagle work is, is remarkable. It's some great stuff. He reliably delivers kills in those scenarios, but that lineup with the Mag 7 really tops it for me. Kusa peeks out. That's what you love to see. Everybody's centered or clustered inside of your reticle when you got that shotgun in hand. Can't ask for anything better than that. And that is a force by one. And that really puts problems in the hands of NRG because they didn't even get a bomb down. But their money is ruined. They have to force buy back because they're going to have to save twice anyway. So this is, this is a desperate position for them. And Cloud9, it looks like they're feeling real, like really good at this point. So I'm excited to see where they take this. They've got an MP9, a Galil, a UMP. They've got all these weapons that if they choose to, James, they could rush the lobby position. They could get creative. There's no HE for NRG which means squeaky door will not be blown off early. That lessens the likelihood of a fast play in towards the A-bomb site. But there is a Molotov onto Ethan. Now one would think maybe that goes on the hut roof, but uh, they seem focused on the outside in RG. Make their way down towards Secret, then use the close quarters engagements. Oh, this could be beautiful. That's pretty good. That can be followed up upon later on. But they will make their way downstairs. A lot of them are half health at this point. Ethan's on 7 HP, Ethan's on 0 HP. And Automatic is ready with the MP9 or is he? The Tech 9 up close. He had an opportunity and he lost it. Maybe there's a chance for NRG to, NRG to plant the bomb. All right, so we've got, we've got some position here for NRG. They're, they're kind of stuck though. Dabs doesn't have to open that door. He can just let them do it for him if they choose to go for this position. Or if he hits the sound cues and Dabs, this is, he's trying to weave his way through into safety once again, and he manages to do so. He spotted the bomb as well. He's doing additional damage, information for his teammates, but these pistols are doing a little bit too much work. What is this? Just tens left alive, one versus three, but look at the HP on the remainder of NRG. This is outrageous. Four HP, two HP, 24. That is a really weird round. 
I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it, it came down to so many. I mean, for example, that moment where you see that long range Krieg spray when everyone's running down after the HE. Just so much chip damage, but just somehow everyone avoids the fatal connection. It's unbelievable. And that's the kind of fortune that NRG need to get back into this one, because now it's Cloud9 with a ruined economy. They've decided to go for a half buy here, just a small investment, but all the money's gonna go deep. He's gonna announce his presence. How much can he get? Does he have any teammates to work off of? It doesn't seem to be the case, as he will be sacrificed. He gets information at least, but Considering the disadvantage in the weaponry, we, I mean, it's, it's difficult to really ask for too much more. And Tenz is gone. He's, he's the guy that creates problems with round, in rounds like this, but he will be eliminated as well. I'm still in shock at that previous round. Yeah. Making their way down secret, they had like three players of about 50 HP or less, from 7 to 50 HP, and somehow managed to turn it around. That was a great opportunity for Cloud9. That should have been a, uh, a pedestrian round for them. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, you agree? Yeah. Ooh, okay. Well, hang on. Akus has picked himself up an AK-47. The pre fuck comes around the corner. It's not good enough. Mixquell tries. I don't know what he's trying there, but he's dead, so it doesn't matter. And just like that, NRG are back in this, but the buy can come in from Cloud9, but they are kind of poor. They can't afford an AWP, really, and as Daps goes glass cannon. I mean, maybe he will. Yeah, he looks like it's that. that's what's happening, Jay. He actually drops it, though. Yeah, I mean... So what's he going to be playing with? He can't afford Kevlar. So he's... Oh, he's I'm really taking the L, man. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's putting his team in a position to win. Taking down As he always does. Give the four players the strongest weapons possible. I absolutely respect that. But you, you have to... I mean, he's used to this, so he knows how to yeah. work around the shortcomings, the limitations, because he did it on his previous team. So... Mixwell will need to deliver big with the AWP should he get the opportunity, should they poke towards ramp. Maybe he rotates later on. And Daps will just be spotting from the B area, it seems, or playing down the vents at the very least. So he can spam the 5-7. It'll be hard to miss from that range. Doesn't mean, though, that he's guaranteed a frag. So really late outside smokes. And part of the reason that they're delaying everything is just a just safety. Oh, actually, nice. I like this. The this, the smokes that are more forward that connects main to garage to make a big wall. More expensive, obviously. You need three for that, but definitely creates issues for the CT side. Well, sometimes you have the third smoke between T Red and the uh, box anyway. That's true. Make sure that you're safe against any orpers. Playing very deep. And so the movement's very slow here from NRG, which can be okay as long as you leave yourself enough time to get onto the bomb site and have be able to error correct. <coughs> but that's a, that's a big clue for automatic. 30 seconds on the clock, and there are two players at the garage that would suggest that they're going towards the A bomb site. And there's no, there isn't really enough time for NRG to turn it around and go somewhere else. But they have the information. No one dealing with Breeze, and this could be disastrous for Cloud9. Here comes a five-seven big one. Finish off the job. The bomb's being planted. He can't do anything about it. Mixwell well will get the frag, but NRG know where both these players are. Tarek and Ethan. Sorry, Daps and Mixwell. So, what can they really do about this? 59 HP. Do you? Prioritize saving the AWP. That's with 4 HP. It's got to be useless in this situation. So it is an enormous gamble. There's no diffuse kit on either of these players. I think it is a safe situation. I don't think there's any other choice for Cloud9. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the move that makes the most sense. And with that, NRG, 10 to 10. They've equalized the score. And I have no idea where this one's going. But I have to say, it's a really interesting game so far between these two teams which is awesome if you consider the fact that sometimes when you have a completely new squad or you, you change a lineup, the changes that ensue can create a disjointed gameplay or maybe some sloppiness or miscommunications, which can kind of make the Counter-Strike not look quite as cool or as good or as fun. But this is, I think both teams are playing very well with what they have right now. And we're seeing, we're seeing some solid stuff, it's smooth. If Cloud9 are to lose this game, I think they will look back at that anti force buy round. But uh, at 10 yeah. to 10, there is plenty of Counter Strike to play. And again, it is so important for Mixwell to try and get something early, moving towards the squeaky door. Because again, in so many rounds, you will uh, blow that off as a NRG, well, as a T player with a HE grenade. So that's the gamble he makes, but nothing doing. They could try to boost over this, although so close to the smoke, that might not be the best idea. But a few warbang attempts 
can't do too much harm. There's so many targets, but he's not firing a weapon. Avoids a flashbang. They're almost lining up. He sees a second player, and he's got the information for his team at the very least, and he will reposition. So this has been quite costly, actually, for NRG. And you can see a preemptive smoke there, knowing that Secret is compromised. So Cloud9 are going to kill another good 20 seconds, solid, solid 20 seconds, before NRG really feel comfortable moving anywhere. And that means there's 45 seconds left. If we take stock of where, what energy actually have right now, there's a lot of ground to be gained between where they are now and an actual bomb site. So they're going to have to use their time very effectively and they start to move forwards. Ethan will find tens. And with that frag, he might attract some more attention towards this main position where Kuster is posted up. Only with a 5 7, though. The equipment is lacking. Quick peek, and Ethan confirms the position. A re peek to finish the job. Three versus four for Cloud9, and they're all going to be running forwards, and Automatic will catch them, but it's not good enough, and that's that's going to be a wrap. I'm not sure if Mixwell can save this again. This is, oh, man. Oh, no, this is so, so, so exposed. Yeah, fires a shot. They know where he is. The bomb's not even planted yet. It's nuke. You're not saving that weapon unless you take two or three players out. So here we are, NRG are now in the lead. And what is the situation for Cloud9? They can buy and they will buy once again. There's a tactical timeout for Cloud9. What can they do to change their fortune? Seems that momentum is with NRG at this point. And uh, Cloud9 are in a situation where they might start to have a buy round, have an eco round, have a buy round, have an eco round, and NRG continues to just climb the ladder towards that semi-final. So they've got to change something up. Yeah, it feels like if they Cloudline actually had some money to work with, you know, we'd see a, a very different story. But obviously, things have dried up massively in the last you know, few rounds, obviously, as NRG started to win rounds and, and batter their economy. But you know, times are changing. We're going to see a couple orgs, which they don't make quite as many appearances now since the nerf. But of course, this is a great map for those scopes to be used on. And Mixwell has the AWP as well, of course. So this is one of the better buys we've seen out of Cloud9, but they've got to make it count. And there is the... Okay, all right. Well, that's a lot of nays straight through the door here. Very fast play. They're going to switch up the pace straight into the upper bomb side, trying to get it done, but Mixwell shuts it down. That's what he was looking for in the previous round, but he has a superior position to deal with that smoke, and they don't lose a single player. That is exactly what Cloud9 needed. Win the round by elimination, no bomb plant, and everybody survive as much money as possible. And boy, do they need it. Even now, you can see that the money is somewhat lacking for them. So, well, it's lacking for everybody now. And NRG's string of consecutive rounds means that their loss bonus will be in the pits. So this is a very key round. There's a lot of potential for the team who wins this round to string something together. And again, you've got those usual grenades, but they may not commit behind them. However, it might exhaust the utility, the Molotovs and so on of that CT side to make the job easier for NRG later on. So slow approach this round. of angles being held forward position outside that's lots of information there for automatic to work off of on the outside position we start to see some ram pressure coming in now as well there's a forward smoke denying some vision for mixwell but he has dabs to play with as well if they think it's just one man here they would be mistaken he's going to get on top of the box the elevated position seeing over the smoke and that was going to spell a lot of problems. And Daft starts to wonder about hell. And he starts to leave Mixwell alone there. That's a very well-timed incendiary. And James, so much time is being bought here for Cloud9. And there's a push around the lobby. Automatic is thwarting the timing. With 35 seconds, the lobby was compromised for a time. And that's an issue. That's a lot of information for the CTs. They know where a number of these NRG players are. And that can allow them to prepare, to visualize, to have the expectation. NRG running towards the B bomb site. There's only one CT here, and there's two right behind him. So there could be some trouble. But it's Mixwell, so maybe there won't be. Can he hold position? He's one versus three. In the moment, misses a no-scope. Three versus three. 15 seconds for the bomb to get planted. The glass match is missed the first time, and maybe that will have something to do with this. Tens by the double doors, trying to stop the bomb from getting planted, but it's planted for decon. 
Yeah, you can see Cloud9 really tried to play the time there, trying to force a horrible situation for NRG, but now the post plant, as the push comes in from Tense, he gets eliminated, had no choice but the push there. To take one jaw, didn't work out. Daps and Kusta now are left alive to try to save this. But Ethan and Suck, they, they seem so lethal here. They've got such strong positions. The Orp now lurking around the corner, and here he goes. It's a great kill from Kusta. There's the trade, but Suck has to find Daps as well. And the bomb is pretty exposed, and oh, he has to jump down. It wasn't exposed enough, but there's no time. Daps had no time. It's all he can do to save the Orp. So close. Yeah, the bomb wasn't planted for the control position, but there was no kit for Daps. I don't know if he would have had time to defuse the bomb anyway, but after the frag, maybe, but it wasn't to be. And it's 12 for NRG. They're in the lead once again. Expensive for all concerned, but there is a buy for all concerned as well. So another key round where both teams will buy within an inch of their economy. Someone's going to be on eco after this round. And we're starting to get into the late game, so it's going to be painful, maybe for all concerned. AWPs on both sides, rifles, pretty reasonable buys. Some limitation in grenades for NRG, however. Cloud9 better equipped in that regard, but the AKs are better than the M4s, and maybe the headshots will make up for it. Once again, waiting to see what the play is from NRG. They've been pretty good at mixing up the pace. I talked about that at the uh, beginning uh, of the half. It can be a good approach to go from one extreme to the other. And we see Kusta taking down Zerg, which is not really a good look. They do have control of Secret, but they're all the way committed. They're all four players. And now there are problems as well, because they've, they, they can't really go back at this point. There's too much risk involved. You might as well just get your numbers in. And Automatic is there waiting. Oh, okay, that's that's a crazy whiff. That's very unfortunate. It looked on, but it was not. And that might be the difference. They don't look for Daps, but the trades come through, and now it's just Tarek and Ethan left. All the CTs on the high ground starting to move down. Mix for the first to do so. Where do you choose to plant the bomb? Got to hope no one's peeking through the door, and they're not. They're not in position just yet. Kuster above the vents at the moment, and Mix will be joined by a teammate in tens. There's a HE. Oh, that's unreal from Mixwell. That's such an absurd angle to get a frag like that. I don't. I can't. Cannot compute. Well, how do you even have <laughs> the mouth know, space to do that? Where's I, the? I don't that's the whole table. That's a whole table swipe. But now it's Ethan one versus three. It's a great start. Mixwell gets his head taken off. Ethan, quick jump peek. Can he survive this? He can't. It's just too much to ask for. And there's a kit for tens. He's on the bomb, and he will find the defuse. The score is tied. Is the bomb plant a saving grace for NRG? No, that money sucks anyway. Not even two and a half thousand per person. Yeah, it looks like this game is, is going to go down to the wire. It's, it's, these teams are so evenly matched right now, at least on this map in, in this moment on the server. And I love how dangerous Ethan feels, even though he, he has, he, he can't move. <laughs> he's like stuck in a corner, but you still have to attack that situation with the perfect coordination. Otherwise, he will kill everyone. It's really smart that he jumped because he has the uh, the bottom of the of the rafters to uh, to make him drop quickly, Rob. So he's not like sailing in the air as he normally would. And he already knows that jump. as well. Yeah, yeah. So he, he needs the information so he can try and get a one versus one. So smart stuff from him. NRG down to the pistols. So this should, I say should, be a chance. Well, it is a chance for Cloud9 to slowly eke forward. And it should be a pedestrian round, but we know that is not always the case today. No flashes, no grenades for NRG at this point. A P250 and a Deagle. Those are the stars of the show. And they will just wait for an opportunity. Again, numbers is their biggest strength. Ethan gets taken now, and they try to advance on Mixwell's position. He has support. He'll make his way up. He's got a Molotov as well. Automatic has a little fish. They're getting close to NRG, but not closer to winning this run, I don't think. Although, as I say that, of course, there are two headshots from the likes of Kusta and Automatic. One of those frags is a Glock. And I th you can see the Molotov comes in. It forces Tens off, or was it Mix? I think Mixwell off of that heaven position. And they heard him drop. And there's so, a pop there. So they know, they know that it should be pretty free. That smoke is there to obviously create a situation where they, I mean, it, it would, I mean, someone could wait there, but pushing that smoke is pretty damn risky. They could try to do it anyway. But it gives them a gun. 
So yeah, you, I mean, you're right, it might be worth it, but it's gonna kill so much time. There's gonna be no time to do anything here. And Mixwell has this sheer vertical off angle, which is very hard to deal with. First player jumps forward to distract the fire, and it ends with the spray, He's looking absolutely phenomenal. As Tarek looks for the finish, but there's simply no time, and Davs gets the backstab, and Cloud9 pick up the round, and all of a sudden, it looks, I mean, is this is still anyone's chance. NRG can still get a buy. That was a catastrophe for Cloud9. Look at their money. It's awful now. NRG had a, de uh, they had a Deagle and a P250. Yeah. And they killed yeah. four of the players of Cloud9. And even though they didn't win that round, the sheer damage they did in that round could cripple Cloud9 if they make one mistake in the rounds to come. That yes, was an awful uh, round for them. Yeah, absolutely. It's a problem. I mean, at least they picked up the rounds and they at least, you know, Das was able to rescue the AWP. That's something that helps. But you're right. I mean, at this point, you know, if NRG picked this round, I mean, their economy is screwed as well. So if, you know, if they manage to lose this round, Cloudline likely gained to 14-15. And like, likewise, if NRG picked this one up, they're, they're likely getting to 14. So this, this next round, this next round is so pivotal for both sides. And... You know, I say that, and then you look at the buy, and it's like Kusa's on an, a Mag 7. Not ideal, but historically, you know, Nuke has, has been the Mag 7 map. I assume that it's, I mean, Swag, I think, really infamously at the beginning of CSGO, really popularized it pretty heavily in North America, at least. And we'll see if Kusa can get it working for him, singing for him the same. High pressure rounds. The door has been abused. You can see it's a little bowed in the middle. Down goes Kusa. Doesn't quite work out from that Mag 7. Tens falls in quick succession. And again, you go back to the damage in that previous round. They're ill-equipped. They're forced to take gambles, dropping off of the Mag 7. Gambles you don't want to take because you should have more money. You should have a rifle, not a Mag 7. And uh, again, it's another round which they may lament later on. Automatic. He, it's a two versus five situation. He's looking for two. There's the second one, the 180 doesn't come fast enough. Three frags in one second, and that's one versus two. Oh my god, they could actually do this. He's got no kit though. He needs to draw Ethan out and find the headshot. He needs a pick. There's a pick from Ethan jumping. Oh, that was and it. And he survives for the most part, and now there's just not enough time. And there is a kit on the high ground, never going to be reached by automatic. But the attempt was awesome. Yeah, I, oh man, I, I feel like if he has a Krieg or an AK, I feel like he maybe gets the kill there. It was a good effort, it was a really good effort from Automatic. I mean, they did so much damage, and, and that actually does, that, that might be kind of important here, because you can see it's gonna be a struggle for NRG to actually rebuy properly. They'll be able to get everything they need, but again, we're in this territory where Cloud9, if they win this round, if they find a way to do that, NRG's money's absolutely ruined. And, there's, and so there's, they, they, oh man, they're in such a bad position, because their money is atrocious. So. Force buying here, there's actually a really strong argument to force buy here. This is, this sucks <laughs> if you're Cloud9, but it, it's one of those things, man, you just, I think you just got to do it. Like it's, it's really crazy because if they, again, if they don't lose so many players in that Glock, in that Glock Deagle round, they don't make the decisions like with the Mag 7 and so on because they have got better weapons. So they yeah. can, they've got more options available to them. So it's just an utter catastrophe. It really is. How about here they are? This, this reminds me of that spot, like when you're playing tournament poker or something, and you're just, you, you, just have, you just have to do it. You have to make a decision. It's like the, it's plus EV, but it just sucks that you have to do it. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to shove, James. It is what it is. 13 apiece, but NRG are far better equipped. But again, we've seen worse rounds won time and time again today. A big flashbang, but there's no transfer. We've really needed, however. Tens and Automatic have enabled Cloud9 to get a man advantage. Here comes the MP9. It is Bedlam. It's Anarchy. They're making plays too fast for NRG to really react to them. It's a four versus two. Make it two versus two now. Stereo frags for NRG. And maybe there's a chance for them to stabilize. Disposing of the rifles, although I'm sure that could be picked up with the E button. You just can't throw them far enough. This is absolute madness. And the two players who have pistols are left. That sucks, but it's a 5-7. Oh my god, I felt like almost, just so close. That's almost had that. Kusa tried to drop down without making any noise. I don't know that they heard him, especially because the Molotov went off at the same time. He's only got a P250. There is surely not a chance in hell. He's just outgunned, outmanned. They've got a setup where they can just bait him, trade him, 
I don't know if he looked for any of the weapons that were outside. And now he's starting to do so, but surely he should see one past the fence. Oh. Okay, there we go. One versus two, he's got the kit. The kit might be the difference maker. It's got to be worth the gamble, surely. It's so difficult, isn't it? It's so, so difficult. I mean, it, it, so like they're in a situation where they have to force bite again the next rounds, and having the having the Krieg at least means, and the kit as well, and the Molotov. That, that actually will have more mileage, I think, in, in terms of their probability to win in the next rounds. So, so there is that. So I, I think this makes the most sense. It's so crazy though, because there is a world where they can try to save this round, so they have they have a full buy, but then they're playing against they're playing against you know 15 rounds. So yeah, but they're only two rounds behind. So that's not the worst thing in the world. But it does look like they're going to force around the Krieg essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think that it's so marginal. I think both decisions are fine. All right. Well, let's see if the decision they chose is going to be enough. I guess they've got a, they've got more force buys this way. So there's two options to have a difficult fight as opposed to one good one or better one. Might not even be good. But here we are. The Anarchy was promising last round, but ran out of steam towards the end. The MP9 and the Krieg with some cameo appearances from pistols. NRG taking it very slow. Do not want to repeat performance. And some of these anti ecos anti force wise have been difficult for NRG to deal with. Let's not forget that infamous round towards the ramp earlier on. And again, we've got that close range wall of smokes around that mini position. But this time the focus is on the inside. Tens with that Deagle, man. He's something to be feared, but it's going to be some action towards Daps that will pressure him down towards ramp. He has to give up ramp completely. Oh, down towards the lower bomb side, I should say. As he gives up ramp, and then LG just you know, inch by inch just taking over the map here. And okay, all right, Kusta finds himself. Some value from that MP9, a trade on to Mixwell and Kusta will open up this bomb site. Tent is close with the Deagle, gets one. That's all he can do, but now it's down to automatic. One versus two, and it's Cirque to shut it down. And they don't have, James, they've been fighting with with toothpicks and pencils and I don't even know what. And they're gonna have to keep doing that. They got to force by again. Yes, they are. But each one looks nervous for an RG and I was starting to wonder about time, but they managed to claw through again. It is a match point for a place in the semi-finals tomorrow for NRG. Cloud9 just two rounds away, so not out of this, but it's definitely to the advantage of NRG. The strong advantage. An extra MP9 in this round, plenty of footsteps on the outside to be heard by the player in the mini position. It seems to make some inroads towards the garage, but they're lining up. Just the one frag in that situation, but it's two frags in total for Cloud9. They've got a man advantage again. And Tens, ever reliable. It seems like he always gets one off the Deagle. Does it again. Ooh. And now, this is, this is really scary because in these positions, you kind of just want to, on the T side, just group up and try to find a way towards the bomb side together. So at least you can guarantee position and trades and then the bomb side. You want to guarantee those as much as you possibly can. Because when you get the bomb down, that's when things get much more favorable for you, typically. But this is so hard on Nuke. It's so hard on Nuke, especially when all you have is outside. We'll see if they can somehow find a way to do it, though. They are moving outside, but I think Cloud9 know what's going on. Tens by control. He hears some footsteps in control. That is a lot of information. That's one of the three players. Maybe they realize it's two. Molotov towards the ramp and Tens could bait off of his teammate if they can do it well enough. But Stanislaw's looking towards A, finds a player lurking around the vent. Beautiful stuff from him, but where will the bomb be headed? It's going upstairs. That's a fantastic play from Stanislaw. He realizes there is position, but it's also position upstairs because Akusta holding things down with the AK-47. There's 25 seconds for NRG to recover this. They've got a plan for heaven. That delay that Kusa just caused is so immense. And now a gun has been collected by Tens. He's going to take down Tarek. It's up to Stan now. It's all up to Stan. He's going to get three. There's the first one. But now they're going to start pressuring his position. They're going to set up the trade. Can Stan somehow survive this? He's going to try to fall back in a way. Oh my god, is he managing to make this work? Daps goes down. It's just one left. It's Kusta, and he gets it. That is so... So important, what a play from Kusta. First, he gets the bomb. He gets the one player that had the bomb. He delays them, he doesn't die. He then brings the rest of his teammates. He gets tens of weapon. I cannot believe that they brought that round back. That was incredible. And this is not done just yet. 
That was an epic performance from Stanislaw as well. Unlucky for him that he didn't manage to get that final frag. But they've got one more chance to take this NRG. I don't know what it means if they tie. That was actually quite interesting. So yeah. maybe production can tell us, give us an inf some information in the hole. But uh, Cloud Nines, their, their buy situation continues to improve. They had one MP9, then they had two MP9s, and they've got an AK-47 in tow. They've got an M4A4 and an Org. So things have improved dramatically for them. NRG's timeout is about to expire, and look at their situation. Here we go. Final round. And again, we see the MP9s coming out. It feels like Cloud9 have been in just desperation mode for the last six rounds straight. It's, it's crazy. But it has been working for them here or there. We've got tens on that org as well. And he's going to silently drop down towards the squeaky position. They may be expecting him up on the HUD. This is pretty bold. It looks like they want to go for this, James. This Tens is in a position to succeed. This could be everything. He could get two. He'll get two, not three. There's a trade mixed well through the smoke like MacGyver. And Tarek is the last man standing. This is a disaster for NRG. He knows one has gone up the ladder. He's got time to figure this out. He can collect the bomb. There is Dap. So he can still do this. He's got to get the bomb, though, and keep his gun out, probably as they could come for him. He has no idea where they are. They know where he is. Obviously, the information is decaying, but they can take some position as things continue. The door was closed by Kusta, which makes things more difficult. If he opens this door, he gets no one out of it. And he is in a one versus two. Kusta pops out, and it 